What's up guys, I'm Iris Shaw and this is The End Times. Over the years, I've seen a lot of explanations for the exchange between the Ancient of Days and the Son of Man in Daniel chapter 7. The main explanation of this encounter that I've seen is that of Jesus being presented before God the Father. This seems to be the common consensus in the church, but let's dissect these verses to see if this belief is right. Daniel chapter 7 starts with Daniel's vision of four beasts that come out of the sea according to Daniel chapter 7 verses 1-7. through seven. For the sake of time, we won't read these verses, but we did do an entire video series explaining these four beasts entitled The Four Beasts of Daniel 7, which is under our The End Times category. In this series, we went into great detail explaining that these four beasts are the dragon of Revelation chapter 12, the beast of the, the sea of Revelation 13, the beast out of the earth in Revelation chapter 13, and the beast out of the bottomless pit in Revelation chapter 11 and 17. Now, with that said, let's keep going. The next verse, verse 8, describes 10 horns on the fourth beast said. The 10 horns are the 10 kings who will rule with the beast out of the bottomless pit for one hour in Revelation chapter 17 verses 11 through 13. The reason that these 10 kings only reign for one hour with the beast out of the bottomless pit is because three of them are killed by the tiny horn that rises according to Daniel chapter 7 verse 8. This little horn is what the church calls the Antichrist. Now, if we're being technical, which if you know me, I have to be technical, this isn't biblically accurate. The man of lawlessness is the biblically accurate name for the church tradition of the Antichrist. As we stated in our video, the Antichrist, which is under our the end times category, there's no such thing as the Antichrist. But instead, Antichrist is a spirit that denies that Jesus is Lord according to all four verses that Antichrist is mentioned in in three chapters of the entire Bible. 1 John 2, 18 through 25, 1 John 4, 1 through 6, and 2 John 1, 4 through 11. The man of lawlessness is the coming ruler that will declare himself to be God according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 1 through 11. Now with that said, look at what happens after the man of lawlessness reigns. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9 through 10. As I looked, thrones were placed and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames. Its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and came out from before him. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. At first glance, this looks like the final judgment, but if we take a second look, we'll see that this isn't actually true. Let's break this verse up for a second. The Ancient of Days is seated and the courts sit in judgment. Now, this sounds eerily similar to Psalms 82. Psalms 82 tells us of the heavenly court sitting in judgment and judging the gods. While this sounds similar, look at the following verses, Daniel chapter 7, 11 through 12. I looked then because of the... I looked then because of the sound of the great words that the horn was speaking. And as I looked, the beast was killed and his body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. As for the rest of the beast, their dominion was taken away, but their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. At this point, the horn is still speaking. I don't think verses 9 through 10 are referring to the final judgment or the judgment of the gods as verse 11 and 12 tells us that the court is sitting in judgment of the horn and the beast, not the gods. This can't be the final judgment as the final judgment takes place after the thousand year reign, which is a thousand years after the man of lawlessness is already punished according to Revelation chapter 20. Verse 12 explains that the other three beasts, their lives are prolonged, but their dominion is taken away. This corresponds with Revelation chapter 16 and the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet all remaining on earth during the wrath of God, then being removed after. The beast and the false prophet to the lake of fire, according to Revelation chapter 19, verse 20, and the dragon chained in the bottomless pit for a thousand years, according to Revelation chapter 20. So this court has to take place towards the end of the Great Tribulation, while the man of lawlessness is still reigning, but before the rapture. Yes, the rapture takes place after the Great Tribulation, according to Matthew 24, 29 through 31, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 53, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, and any other verse that talks about the rapture. 
So with that said, this judgment that we are seeing cannot be the final judgment, nor can it be the judgment of the gods in Psalms 82. So let's reread that verse one more time. Daniel chapter 7 verse 9 through 10. As I looked, thrones were placed and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and came out from before him. A thousand thousand served him and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court sat in judgment and the books were opened. This description of the Ancient of Days sounds quite familiar. Revelation chapter 1 verse 12 through 16. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white, like white wool, like snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire, his feet were like burnished bronze, refined in the furnace, and his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars. From his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining in full strength. This is the spiritual description of Jesus in heaven. While I'm not saying that this is evidence that the Ancient of Days is Jesus, what I am saying though is that it sounds pretty similar. Anyways, let's keep going. The court sitting in judgment seems to match the 24 elders seated on their thrones in the presence of God. Then the rapture takes place. Revelation chapter 11 verse 15 through 16 says, Then the seventh angel, then the seventh angel blew his trumpet and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who sit on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshiped God. The seventh trumpet is the rapture, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 53. Now, according to the verse that we just read, Revelation 11, 15 through 16, the elders were seated on their thrones. Then they got off of their thrones after the last trumpet sounds, which is the rapture. And this actually corresponds perfectly with Daniel chapter seven, verses nine through 12, because the court sat in judgment and then suddenly the rapture took place. Now with this information, I think we can piece together who the Ancient of Days is and who the Son of Man is. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's read the next verses that introduce the Son of Man. Daniel chapter 7 verse 13 through 14. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a Son of Man, and he came to the Ancient of Days, and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. This sounds like Jesus being presented to God the Father. Acts chapter 1 verse 9 tells us that Jesus ascended into heaven on a cloud. The only problem is, that took place 2,000 years ago. So if this specific court doesn't sit in judgment until after the great tribulation, then the presenting of the Son of Man can't be Jesus because Jesus ascended and was presented to the Father 2,000 years ago because the Son of Man is presented to the Ancient of Days after the great tribulation. So then who is the Son of Man? Did you know that the term Son of Man isn't only a title for Jesus? Daniel, the one who saw the vision that we just read, the vision of the Son of Man, was called Son of Man in the very next chapter, in Daniel chapter 8, verse 17. In fact, throughout the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel is called Son of Man by God. Therefore, to simply say Jesus is the Son of Man because he calls himself the Son of Man while on earth doesn't actually fit. It doesn't really work because others are called Son of Man as well. So then who is the Son of Man in Daniel chapter 7? Well, the great thing about this vision is that we don't have to take a guess or make assumptions. Gabriel himself gives us the interpretation. So thank you very much, Gabriel. Now, since the interpretation is more than just explaining the Son of Man and the Ancient of Days and etc. Now, since the interpretation is more than just explaining the Son of Man, I'm not going to read the entire thing, but I urge you to read it in its entirety after the fact so that you know that I didn't 
take anything out of context. So Daniel chapter 7 verse 17 through 18. These four great beasts are four kings who shall arise out of the earth, but the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever. Now we're going to skip down to verse 21 through 22. As I looked, this horn made war with the saints and prevailed over them until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given for the saints of the Most High. And the time came when the saints possessed the kingdom. Daniel chapter 7 verse 24 through 27. As for the ten horns out of this kingdom, ten kings shall arise and another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the former ones and shall put down three kings. He shall speak words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and shall think to change the times and the law. And they shall be given into his hand for a time, times, and half a time. But the court shall sit in judgment and his dominion shall be taken away to be consumed and destroyed to the end. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. His kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him. According to Gabriel's interpretation, the son of man is the saints of God. It's the church. Now, this was difficult for me to understand at first because I originally thought that the church is strictly referred to as female because the church is the bride of Christ. In fact, I'm pretty sure I stated that in one of our videos. What I didn't take into consideration is that the church is also spiritual Israel, of which God calls his son in Exodus chapter 4 verse 22. This also makes sense why Paul says that the church has received the spirit of adoption as sons of God, Romans chapter 8 verse 15. Here's a few more reasons that the son of man is the church and not Jesus. The kingdom we are given is the kingdom that Christ has received, Revelation chapter 3 verse 21. The one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. Revelation chapter 20 verse 4 through 6. Then I saw thrones and seated on them were those to whom the authority to judge was committed. Also I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God and those who had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and they will reign with him for a thousand years. Revelation chapter 22 verse 5, and night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. We're told that the church will reign with Christ as well as sit on his throne with him. This perfectly corresponds with Daniel chapter 7. Another point is that the Son of Man is presented to the Ancient of Days on a cloud. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 17 tells us that this is how the rapture will take place. This is the presenting of the church to Jesus. This makes sense since it's the Ancient of Days that's the one who comes to the rescue of the saints in Daniel chapter 7 verse 21 through 22 that we read earlier. The only person of the Godhead that comes to the rescue of the saints is Jesus. Matthew 24 verse 29 through 31 says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Never is there a verse that says that God the Father will leave his throne to rescue mankind. That's just not his job. That's the job of Jesus. Therefore, the Ancient of Days has to be Jesus. And if you thought it was a little confusing why Jesus then called himself the Son of Man and said that the Son of Man was coming on the clouds of heaven to rescue what Daniel 7 called the Son of Man. As we mentioned in our video, is Jesus the beginning of God's creation, which is under our Nuggets of Truth category? We explain that Jesus set off his godliness 
in other words, did not use his godliness, did not use his divinity, became man, and then died as man. And when he rose, he didn't rise as God, but he rose as the first of God's new creation. It's kind of fitting that Jesus called himself the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven to get the son of man who is now made in his image as we stated in that video. When we are raptured up, we now take on the image that was lost to us. We take on that image that Jesus rose in. Jesus rose as the new creation. When we are raptured up, when we are presented to him, we are presented in that new creation because when we are raptured up, so it's fitting that Jesus call himself the son of man because he was talking as the mediator and Daniel describes him as the ancient of days, referring to Jesus's godhood, Jesus's divinity. Whereas when Jesus tells us the same event, he tells us as the mediator, the high priest, the one that went before us. Whereas Daniel tells us the event from the point of view of Jesus's divinity and our new image. Anyways, while you ponder all of these things, let's sum everything up for you guys. The Ancient of Days will sit in his court and pronounce judgment on the man of lawlessness at the end of the Great Tribulation. Then he will come to collect his people from the tyranny of the man of lawlessness. This is why the Ancient of Days is Jesus. Jesus is the only one that comes to the rescue of the saints and delivers them from the man of lawlessness with the rapture. The Son of Man is presented before the Ancient of Days because the Son of Man is the church. The church will sit with Jesus on his throne as Jesus sat with his Father on his throne. I hope you all enjoyed this video and that it opened your eyes to who the Ancient of Days is and who the Son of Man is. And if you didn't enjoy it, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.